AI baffles even the NSA. How AI will replace me and how AI will replace you. You're watching the AI report. Like and subscribe to reduce your chances of being replaced by AI. And let's get into it. I was wondering when we're gonna see a headline like this. So, the NSA is working on an AI roadmap on how to deal with the emergence of widespread AI technologies. NSA officials have kind of admitted that even they were caught off guard by all the progress that AI has made over the last few months and are still not exactly sure what to do with AI, how to use it for good and not use it for bad, or at least that's what they tell the public. This is insane to me. The NSA was arguably the number one entity in the world when it comes to crunching data and figuring out trends and projections. Also, over the last few decades, the agency has been working with AI probably more than most other entities in the world. And now, even they don't know what exactly to make of generative AI. Huh. Even the NSA is not immune to the AI tornado. Crazy times. And while the US is still considering its options on how to use AI for military and intelligence purposes, Israel is already playing with their new toys. The Israeli Defense Forces are already using AI to choose targets for airstrikes and manage logistics. Yeah, this reminds me, I saw an interview with Benjamin Netanyahu, Israel's Prime Minister, on the Lex Friedman podcast. He was really giddy about AI and how Israel plans to become a major player in the field. As a general rule in most things related to technology, I've found that it's smart to see what Israel is working on. We always see such an asymmetric output from them, a relatively small country with a relatively big output always at the forefront of technology. Of course, using AI for warfare is definitely my least favorite use case, but we all know it's inevitable, so I guess let's see if Israel starts the whole Skynet thing. Next, we have Meta with a new generative AI model that can turn text to images and images to text. CM3 Leon, which is somehow supposed to be pronounced chameleon, requires five times less compute and smaller datasets than most similar state-of-the-art models. Okay, now we have another one of these AI image generators. I guess a few more options can't hurt. Moving on, research by OpenAI and the University of Pennsylvania suggests that at least 80% of jobs will be influenced by AI. The jobs most affected will be the cushy, white-collar jobs that require a college education. And most of the jobs affected will see between 10 and 50% of the tasks influenced. One caveat here. The research is done in part by OpenAI. And you might say it's worth their while to push such a narrative. If you say that AI will affect every possible job out there, you will kind of scare people into paying more attention to your technology. That said, I think this report is pretty much correct. We're probably not exactly sure how AI will affect most of our lives, but I think I smell a lot of change in the air. The report stresses that most of these jobs won't be entirely replaced by AI, but rather supplemented by it. And speaking of being replaced by AI, guess who should probably worry the most? Yours truly, it turns out. India's Odisha TV has introduced Lisa, their new AI anchor. Let's check her out. Warm greetings to everyone. Namaste. I am OTV's and Odisha's first AI news anchor Lisa. As you all know, OTV is the first private satellite channel of Odisha which came... Okay, I can't play a lot more of this segment because I don't want this channel to be like destroyed. But uh, yeah, I totally see like a version of her replacing me on this channel in a few years, as long as they can train another AI to fill the script with bad humor. Oh wait, AI already has bad humor. Well, I guess I've had my 15 minutes of fame, if you can call it that. But enough about me and my sob story and my woes and how AI will replace me, let's talk about how AI can replace you as well, or some of you. Air.ai is a conversational AI that can perform sales and customer support calls. Let's see what it has to say here. Hello? Hey, James. Yeah, who's that? Hey, James. It's Alexander from Tesla Motors. How's your day going so far? It's going pretty good, my man. How about yourself? You said from Tesla, right? It's the car company? Yeah, that's right. 
I'm calling from Tesla Motors, the car company. Did you have any trouble or questions while customizing your car on our website? Uh, no, we we're just kind of shopping around and, uh, you know, taking a look. Gotcha. That makes sense. Mm, okay, there is some latency there. And it does sound a bit unnatural, but I can bet my left hemisphere that many customers and prospects will have no problem interacting with this level of authenticity. I mean, I've done some cold calling previously, I've also seen other people do it. Human salespeople are just as phony as this AI with slightly better vocal intonation. Anyway, this is actually worrying for many people. I think some salespeople and customer support agents are in real danger of losing their jobs. We already saw that happen in an Indian startup a few episodes ago. Let me know in the comments if you work in one of these areas. I would like to talk to you about this. I want to work on reskilling people affected by these technologies or helping them in potentially new and more, let's say, entrepreneurial endeavors. So yeah, shoot me a comment if that sounds good to you. So jobs lost, jobs created, that's part of the human condition and that's the way it is. That was the AI report. Like and subscribe if you want to remain relevant and employed in the age of AI. And I will see you tomorrow.